The Strapi plugin Magic allows you to make authenticator requests to the Strapi API by using Magic. With Magic, you can add passwordless login to your application, then retrieve a barrier token, which you can use to make authenticator requests to Strapi. This plugin allows you to set up the Strapi side in two minutes with just one line of code. I'm Alex the Entrepreneur, and in this video, you'll learn how to install and set up the Strapi plugin Magic, how to test the installation, I'll give you some security considerations and I'll show you some extra use cases for this plugin as well. Before you start, make sure to register an account at magic.link. You'll need to have access to your magic secret key that you're gonna add to your admin panel and your magic public key to test the integration. Let's get started. Install the plugin by running the command npm i strapi plugin magic. Once the installation is done, make sure to rebuild the admin panel. You can do so by running the command npm run build. Then run it with npm run develop. In the admin panel, check the magic section and paste in your secret key. You can retrieve your secret key from your magic link dashboard. Once you pasted the secret key, click on submit or save and wait for the success message. If you don't have a magic secret key, then go on magic.link and register. In order to get the plugin to work, you'll have to extend the permissions policy from the users and permission plugin. And you can do that by using the extension system. This simply means that you're gonna create a new file in the extensions folder. So basically, you're gonna create this new file under extensions, user and permission, slash config, slash policies, slash permissions.js. Then you're gonna take the default code from the Strapi repo, and the link is gonna be both in the description, in the documentation, and uh, you can also see it on screen. And lastly, you're gonna customize this permission.js file by adding the one line integration. From the documentation or from the bottom of this video, you can click on this link, that shows you the normal version of policies slash permission.js. You're gonna copy this and then create a new file called users permission slash config, create a new folder called policies, and then a new file called permissions.js. Then paste in the code, which is literally the, the original code from Strapi, and lastly, on line five, you're gonna need to add one line of code, which you can copy from the documentation, but I'm gonna type it. And this line is await strappy dot plugins square bracket magic dot services square bracket magic dot login with magic and pass the context as the only parameter. And that's it. You've now integrated magic as a way to authenticate your request done to the API. If you need further help, you can check the Strapi Magic example repo with a fully coded example of how to use the magic plugin. In order to test the magic integration, you need to set up a collection type that requires being authenticated then retrieve the JWT token for the Magic SDK, and finally make a request with the JWT token. Let's create a collection type called post by going on Content Types Builder, click on Create New Collection Type, Post, and let's add a field called Title, just to keep it short. Let's set up the roles and permissions, which may be in the settings panel if you're using 3.2.x. I'm currently at 3.1.1, so I see it here, but you're gonna see it in the settings page. And click on your users and permission and send up the authenticator role to be able to retrieve the posts. So I'm gonna click on authenticated, and then I'll click on post, find, find one, and then I'll save. Next up, I'm gonna use Postman to make a request to the post endpoint. So I'm gonna create a new request and I'll make a get request to HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 1337 slash posts. And I'm seeing that this is forbidden. If I try and make a request with some random bearer token as my header, the request will fail and I'll see that I'm unauthorized with an invalid token. 
So in order to retrieve the JWT token, you would have to set up magic. For your convenience, in the Strappy Magic Demo repo, I've set up a simple file which we can retrieve to quickly authenticate for magic. So I'm gonna go in Strappy Magic Demo, I'll click on public, and you can see this file called magic.html, which you can literally just copy. And if you look at it, at the end of the day, it's just a form. This form will have an on submit, and on submit, we're just gonna use the magic SDK to use the API key that you're gonna be able to specify here. So make sure to change the API key to be your own key, and this is your public key, and then it's gonna make a request and it's gonna authenticate us. And once the request is successful, we're gonna be able to retrieve the JWT token. Let's copy this code. Let's go in the Strapi repo under the public folder, create a new file called magic.html and paste out this code. Once you pasted it out, check line 15 and make sure to replace this with your own public key. So you can go magic, publishable key, copy, and then paste it. And now you know that this will work for you. So I'm gonna go on localhost 1337 slash magic.html. So now I can do a quick test. Input your email here, in my case, alex at entrepreneur.xyz, and then click here for JWT. Since I very recently logged in with Magic, I actually will immediately receive a JWT. However, in your case, you may actually see a floating screen telling you that you have to go in your email and click on a link. Uh, either way, once the login is successfully happened, you'll see a JWT token. This is your JWT token for your user. And you can see that there are no users in my Strapi admin panel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on Postman. I'm gonna set up the bearer token to use the token we just received and make a authenticated request. The request was successful. Since I have no articles, you see an empty list. However, you see a 200 and you see that I actually got a response. Additionally, if you go in the Strapi panel, you'll see that the users now contain a new user, the user with my email, both for username and for email. They have no password and the authentication for this user will always be handled by magic. Here's a few security considerations. Since you're using the extension system to override the way you validate the JWT token, you're now responsible for ensuring that the permission.js file is always up to date with Strapi's latest release. While I tried my best to make it as simple as possible for you to integrate with Magic, you should take some time to familiarize yourself with this plugin and you should also try to fully understand what you're doing to make Magic Link works. There's gonna be a few resources in the Magic Link repo, so I want you to check those links to ensure that you know what you're doing. Magic Link also associates each user with a decentralized ID. By default, this is an Ethereum wallet that not only uniquely identifies the user, but also allows the user to interact with Ethereum decentralized applications. You can use the public address instead of the email by simply using the login with Magic service and adding a second parameter set to true. Instead of using the user email, this option will use the Ethereum public address. So what I did is I already set up my permission to have login with magic with the CTX parameter and this extra parameter set to true. As you can see here, I have no users and I still have the previous JWT token, which is still unexpired because it's gonna expire uh, in 15 minutes. So I'm gonna make my request with the same uh, user. And as you remember, the email was alex at entrepreneur.xyz. But if I go in Strapi and I refresh the panel, you'll see that there's no mention of my email. And instead, my system is using my public Ethereum address that is associated with uniquely with this email. You can see that if I make another request, the system still works and this provides either anonymity or pseudo anonymity. And additionally, it allows you to integrate Strapi and Magic Link in applications that are decentralized applications that interact with the Ethereum blockchain. More information in the Magic Link website. That's it for this video. If you need further assistance, check the readme, the demos, or reach out to magiclink at https colon slash slash magic dot link or alex the entrepreneur at https colon slash slash entrepreneur dot xyz. The development for this plugin was sponsored by Magic Labs Inc. and the plugin was initially developed by Alex the Entrepreneur. Thank you for watching.